Hi. Uh, good morning, everybody who has logged on to the call. Um, my name is Ramanan. I'm the mission director of Atal Innovation Mission, which is a flagship innovation and entrepreneurship initiative of the government of India, operating from the Niti Aayog, the National Institution for Transforming India. First and foremost, I would like to wish all the uh, people who have logged on to the call that they are all healthy and hearty in spite of this COVID-19 uh, very difficult circumstances that we are finding ourselves in. and that all of you are following the necessary safeguards uh, that have been advocated by your institution by your authorities or by the local government we are indeed living in very very uh, unprecedented times uh, the covid-19 virus has descended upon us uh, with no warning whatsoever and has disrupted supply chains across the world it has disrupted lives and livelihoods uh, in various nations including ours uh, it has created grievous loss of lives and livelihoods and at the same time it has also created a fear of uncertainty a fear of what is there in store for us in the months ahead and in the years ahead uh, there are other challenges that are going to be uh, getting sharper attention like for example uh, challenges of climate change that we have been only talking about but we have not experienced to the level that we are experiencing this covid-19 virus at the same time this virus has revealed to us in very stark manner the possibilities that also exist by leveraging technology which is becoming affordable accessible available and advanced in order to solve many of the problems pressing problems that we see today as well as we are foreseeing in the near future in a post covid 19 world uh, it is important and relevant for us to deliberate upon how technology skill development innovation and entrepreneurship can play a vital role in the clarion call that the atmanirbhar of atmanirbhar bharat that was launched by the prime minister a couple of months ago indeed when we look at the clarion call the prime minister identified very eloquently the five pillars upon which atmanirbhar bharat or a self reliant india would be based upon first and foremost he said that we have the pillar of demographic dividend now what does this pillar of demographic dividend mean or imply from a point of innovation entrepreneurship and skill development we are a country with 1.3 billion people out of which 65% of our country is under 35 years old we have 1.4 million schools in our country more than 10500 engineering and related institutions we have 39000 colleges and we have 150 million young students who are going to be entering into the workplace over the next 5 to 10 years we have a demographic dividend that is the envy of many a country most of the countries are very envious of the fact that india has this youthful energetic force that can transform not only the nation but can transform the world but how do we ensure that we empower this demographic dividend these 150 million young students with tools technologies and the relevant knowledge upon which solutions of tomorrow are being built and that is why in this particular summit it is very important for us to deliberate on how we are going to introduce them into the world of innovation and entrepreneurship so that not only is the commercial innovation and the economy of the country can be improved but also all the other factors that go into the development of a nation and into the establishment of a nation as a leader are also ensured now that means we have to ensure that we are able to address the second pillar the pillar of infrastructure now how do you do that uh, you have to be able to we have a country uh, we have where we have 600000 plus villages we have 4000 plus small towns and cities we have uh over 715 districts out of which 115 of them are aspirational districts now these aspirational districts are in the bottom of the pyramid we need to ensure that this bottom of the pyramid is being addressed in terms of basic access to healthcare basic access to education affordable housing clean drinking water and sanitation and waste management we still have in the aspirational districts one in five infant uh, maternal mortality one in four infant stunting and one in three infant mortality now those are numbers which should be unacceptable and this is because we have a vast country where more than 4000 towns and cities exist but most of them migrate to eight tier one cities 
And that is not a sustainable solution. We need to ensure that the benefits of technology and the benefits of the economy reaches to the rural landscape of a country, to the hilly and coastal districts, to the aspirational districts, uh, to uh, every place uh, over the 600,000 villages that are there in our country. That means a tremendous focus on rural fintech uh, and India has one of the fastest growing fintech markets in the world. Financial technology, uh, fintech and, and other social innov socially driven innovations are very important to address this problem of infrastructure or the pillar of infrastructure. It is a tremendous opportunity, however, for innovators and entrepreneurs to address this problem. We need at least a thousand smart cities in our country. These can become hubs of innovation and job creation. So how do we facilitate that? The third pillar is the pillar of demand. We have over 1.3 billion people and therefore the demand of this country and the diversity of this country shows there are tremendous opportunities for every startup and every entrepreneur and every innovator to be able to exercise. We are a country with a billion people, but with a million challenges. How do we convert these million challenges into a million opportunities? That is the central problem, but that is also the great opportunity that is there in front of us. Fourthly, we have the pillar of socioeconomic progress that the Honorable Prime Minister mentioned. Socioeconomic progress is absolutely important for a country like India, where 22% of our country is still below the poverty line. 44% of our country is agri-economy based. Like I said, we have 115 out of 715 aspirational districts. Now, how do we ensure that not only do we focus on commercially driven innovation, but also social innovation that will bring social good. How do you leverage technology to be able to drive social good and social equality? And finally, the fifth pillar that he talked about is the pillar of technology. Technology has become affordable, accessible, available, and advanced. Technology is changing the very shape of the world that we are living in. It is able, you are experiencing a different world and the world is experiencing a different you because of technology. It is because of technology that even in the COVID-19 crisis, we are all able to connect and communicate with each other to be able to deliberate on topics of importance like the one that is being discussed now. 3D printing is revolutionizing the way you are able to conceptualize, prototype, define, develop and manufacture a product right in front of your eyes without having a large manufacturing setup. Robotics is driving the next degree of automation. Internet of Things is incorporating and integrating sensor technologies into man, machine, device, plant, soil and space so that you are getting vast amounts of information to be able to be processed at lightning speed by supercomputers or nanocomputing. You are having big data and analytics that is able to analyze large amounts of data and process them at lightning speed. We are having advances in communication technologies like three, 5G technologies, wireless technologies, as well as fiber technologies and satellite technologies to be able to communicate from Salem to San Francisco, from Sikkim to Seattle. Now, how do we leverage all of this changing technology and the possibilities that changing technology have in order to stimulate and create the solutions that are much needed in our country? And this is why the Athal Innovation Mission has been set up by the government in order to create and promote an ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship across the length and breadth of the country so that we can realize our dream of Atmanirbhar Bharat. You see, India has never lacked for great innovators, great thinkers, great engineers, great scientists. You name them, they are all there. When you provide them with an ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship where they're able to realize their creative potential, they blossom and they achieve the highest levels of eminence that is possible in their domain. It is no wonder that we have a Satya Nadella heading Microsoft, a Sundar Pichai heading Google, a Shantanu Narayan heading Adobe, and Arvind Ramakrishna heading uh, IBM. We have a number of our innovators and a number of our teachers who are heading, who are the deans of universities, including uh, prestigious ones like the Harvard Business School or in Carnegie Mellon or in Stanford University. So what we need is to create that ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship, which will allow a thousand companies to bloom in our country, a thousand Satya Nadalas and a thousand Sundar Pichais to be created. 
And that is why the Athal Innovation Mission has launched upon a series of initiatives, which can be embraced by the corporate sector and by all of those who are listening onto this call. At the base level, we are ensuring that our young students from schools who are graduating into the universities or are coming into the universities acquire a problem solving innovative mindset. Gone are the days where a rote learning mindset is going to help you solve the problems of a country. We need to create a culture of innovation, a culture of problem solving, a culture of innovative thinking in our young students. And so we have launched over 10,000 tinkering labs across the country in our schools, secondary schools, so that young students from grade six to grade 12 have an opportunity through 3D printing, robotics, IoT, miniaturized electronics, and augmented virtual reality, do-it-yourself kits, to dabble with and solve problems in a tinkering lab in an atmosphere of fun and learning and not pressurized by rote learning. We have today over 5 million young students who will have access to these tinkering technologies and empower them with tools that are going to create the solutions of tomorrow. And it has been amazing to see the impact that this has had on our young students. They are creating tremendous innovations. We run tinkering marathons and tinkering fests and tinkering challenges. And in the last tinkering marathon, more than 50,000 young students from schools participated in creating innovations like solar panel IoT-based irrigation management systems, robotic-based waste management systems, IoT-based surveillance management systems, and so on. At the university level, we have launched hundreds of incubators. India is one of the fastest growing startup nations of the world. We are more than 55,000 startups and we are more than 400 on incubators today in our country. Now this has led us to achieve great leaps in the global innovation index that was recently announced. From a position of 81 in 2015, we have reached position of 48 in 2020 an amazing 33 places improvement in just five years. That speaks for the potential of innovation and entrepreneurship that a country can have and the impact that it can have. We are ensuring also through these incubators, fostering thousands of startups, which will be world-class startups who will create solutions for problems they see in and around the community. They will leverage Aadhaar, Jandan, and all the banking accounts and the insurance technologies and fintech technologies to be able to create an impact, not only for from an economic point of view, but also from a socio-economic point of view. The third thing that we are doing is we are launching what are known as community innovation centers. Now, these community innovation centers are required in order to bring the benefits of innovation to the rural public, to the tier two, tier three cities that I talked about, to the 600,000 villages that we are talking about. If we do not have locally driven community innovation, we will not be able to create local hubs of innovation and job creation. Take for example, a place like Goa, it needs uh, innovation in boosting the tourism industry, in boosting the cashew nut industry, in boosting the fishing industry, the mining industry, or the shipbuilding industry. So we need locally community driven innovations to be able to create that impact. And that is why hundreds of other community innovation centers are being set up so that you can have local entrepreneurs getting an opportunity to create solutions for the local community and thereby create job creation. The fourth thing that we are doing is we are launching a number of challenges called Atal New India Challenges and Arise Challenges, Applied Research and Innovation for Small Enterprises. Now, these challenges are to stimulate Make in India innovations in the MSME industry. Unless our in MSME industry, which occupies more than 70% of our population uh, in the, in uh, either informally or formally in the labor force, unless they are able to contribute significantly to the GDP, we will not be able to progress. We have today the MSME industry contributing only 29% of our GDP. How do we ensure that they contribute 50% of our GDP? And finally, if you want to ensure India progresses and addresses the various opportunities that we have, because we have a number of countries actually flocking to India to address the opportunities here, we need to ensure that our startups, our entrepreneurs get the benefit of addressing these opportunities because of the demand that I talked about. And if you want to do that, we need to ensure that these challenges and these uh, MSME opportunities are also inclusive in nature, which means we are able to carry our women entrepreneurs along. 
Today, we have only 13% of women entrepreneurs in our country, and that's a small number. When you compare that, we have more than 48% of our population as women. We need to ensure that this number increases to 50% of the entrepreneurs. In the 1,600 plus Athal startups that have started in the last two years, I'm very happy to share that 500 of them are women-led startups, and that is more than 30% of the startups are women-led startups. Like I said, we need to increase that to 50% plus. Now, if we do all of this, uh, we will be able to uh, arrive at the Atmanirbhar Bharat, the self-reliant India that we talk about. And Atmanirbhar Bharat is not a selfish Bharat. It is in fact a self-reliant Bharat that can be a pillar of support, not only to India, but to the rest of the world. Any solution that we develop in India is also a solution for the rest of the world. And therefore, I do hope that this conference will deliberate on how we can leverage technology in not only the fintech services, but in all the other services that we are talking about in order to create that ecosystem, which will enable a Bharat of our dreams. We have the opportunity in this knowledge led era in the knowledge based economy. We have the opportunity to create an impact, not only to India, but to the rest of the world through our technology. We have, after all, grown $191 billion IT ITS industry just in the last 15, 20 years. And this gives us the possibility and the, and the partnerships that are required in order to build an Atmanirbhar Bharat. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share a few thoughts on this particular occasion. And all the very best to every one of you who is logged on to the call. Do be safe. Thank you.